Hi, today I'm going to do an example of a two lens problem. I'm going to do one with a converging lens at the front and then a diverging lens at the back. But not only am I going to do the math, I'm also going to show you the ray tracing one more time, just because a couple people need a little more help on the ray tracing. So I'm going to set it up and we'll do a nice long straight line. Oh boy, okay, we'll see if that's big enough. And there's my horizontal axis, my vertical axis for the first lens. We'll, let's see, we'll put it right here. Okay, so this is my first lens, and I'm saying this is a converging lens. My second lens, centimeters, centimeters. So my second lens, I'll put, eh, I'll put 30 centimeters away from the first lens, so there's that. And this one's a diverging. I'm gonna put those little pictures there to remind me that um, this one's converging, so it has a positive focal. This one's diverging, negative focal. So let's put an object out here. Uh, I'm actually gonna put an object close in. We'll put an object right here. So there's my object. <laughs> And we'll see what we've got for focal. How about, hmm, I'm going to do a 20 centimeter focal on the first one. So 20 centimeters. So the focal of this lens is positive, because converging, 20 centimeters. So there's my first focal. And for the second lens, diverging lens. It's a negative focal, because it's a diverging lens. What should we have? Should we do 15? Let's do 15. Ooh, they overlap. All right. So I better label these. This is F2. This is F2. All right, so then my first lens, I've got F1 here and F1 here. All right, so here's my setup. And this is negative 15. I've got an object in front of a converging lens. That's going to form an image, and I'm going to use the image from this first lens as an object for lens two. But I will do the ray tracing. So for a converging lens, we've got three rays, and we'll see how good this works. It's hard to see what's <laughs> parallel. Okay, so here we have one ray that goes out parallel to the axis, and then through the focal. I've got to be careful. Go going to the first lens, the focal of the first lens. Oh, this is not going to work. I need to make a shorter object. Sorry, we need to make a shorter object because I can see that this is just going to go badly. So we'll make an object back down here. Okay, new object. All right, parallel. And then we go through the focal of lens one. All right, so there's my first ray. We have something that goes out parallel to the axis and then through the focal. We have the easy one, which goes through the center of the lens. All right, that's the simplest one. And then the third, which is through the near focal and then it goes, leaves the lens parallel. And you might say, ah, how do I do this? Because this is the tricky one. So don't think about which one goes first. Just realize you have to line up object and this side focal. It doesn't matter which direction we go from one to the other or the other to the one. So we've got to go from the focal up. Ooh, ooh, ooh. There we go. And then we're going to go out parallel to the axis. And what do we got? I'm going up to about there. That's pretty good. Okay, so there's my three rays. There are my three rays for the converging lens. But I look at these three and I say, they don't meet up anywhere over here. So there is no real image between the two. That means we have a virtual image and we have to backtrace these rays. My virtual image is going to be back here somewhere. So I need to backtrace all of those rays. And I like using dotted lines to remind me that the rays aren't actually there. This is just where our brain thinks the image is. So, let's see, something like that. 
squeak, squeak, squeak. And then we've got one that lines up kind of like that. Oh, well, not too bad. All right. So we've got our three rays, and we're going to have an image right here. So image number one is here. Object number one is there. So this is a virtual image. We had to backtrace. If we put a screen here, we'll never be able to see anything. The only way we see this with a virtual image is if we put our eye here. And even though the object is here, our brain says, oh, the object is over here. So we're tricking our brain into thinking it's here. So that's the first uh, image. Now we're going to use this image as our object, our new object for the second lens. So this becomes object for lens two. And this is going to be interesting to try to catch all the colors on this one. Okay. So for a diverging lens, remember that we have slightly different rays than for a converging lens. So a diverging lens has to spread the rays out here. So our first one, well, let's see, I can do the one that goes out parallel. Okay, so I'm I'm back tracing. Uh, oh, nope. As soon as it hits the lens, it's got to do something different. So, as soon as it hits the lens, what does it do? Well, a converging lens brings it down to this focal. We don't want a converging lens. It's diverging. So, what do we do? We say, "Oh, it's got to spread it out." I'm going to use this focal to say it's going to spread out that way. So I'm going to put this with, whoop, 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 line up right where that is, and line it up with my focal. And this ray is going to go swooshing up over there. OK. So it's coming from our new object, coming parallel to the axis, and then it goes whoosh up there. The second ray is the easy one through the center of the lens. Oh, this is a big one. Whoa, OK. So <laughs> I got it. Yep. There's our second ray through the center of the lens. So there's one, there's two. Uh, and the third ray is the one that gives people trouble with the diverging lens. But if you can keep in mind that you have to use both focals in the center, you'll know you have to do something with this. We've already come in parallel and gone and used this focal. We've already used the center, so we've got to do something with this. And we have to have a ray that leaves parallel to the axis. So with this one, this is the trickier one, how about I try aiming at the far focal? Oh boy. OK, so I'm going to aim at the far focal. I'm just going to do a light line there. And I went too far again. As soon as I hit the lens, we have to change. Because some, as soon as you hit that lens, something changes. This is the one where we leave parallel to the axis. All right, so as soon as it hits the lens there, it's going to leave parallel to the axis. And hopefully this is reasonably parallel. All right, those are my three rays. Now diverging lens spreads them out. Good. So where is the image going to be formed? Well, not over here. The image is going to be formed somewhere over here. These three rays, the three that leave the lens, I'm going to backtrace these three. This one's easy. I already have that one. And I can backtrace parallel to the axis. All right, so we can backtrace parallel to the axis. And again, I'm backtracing. I like to use dotted lines to remind myself that this is a virtual image. And then the third one is this one. I'm going to backtrace that. And I, you know, I lined it up with this. I know, I know where this one goes. It lines up with the focal. So backtrace this one. And that goes lining up with the focal. OK, what a mess, right? <laughs> I'm going to erase some of those earlier ones because I need to keep track of which ones I'm looking for. So I'm going to erase those. And keep in mind that I'm looking for the uh, three that I backtraced, which are the dashed lines. So this one, this one, and this one, they all converged right there. OK, so there is image number two. There's my image number two. And so image number one was here, and that became object number two. 
and here's through and then we use the ray tracing to figure out that the final image is going to be somewhere around here. All right, so there's an example with a converging lens and a virtual image. Now we're going to use that virtual image as the object for a diverging lens. Now we can do the math. So let's figure out the math on this. I like to just separate out the two lenses. So for lens number one, what do I know? I had a focal of positive 20. And what was my DO? Well, I better measure that, huh? So my DO, we're going from the object to the lens. That was about, mm -mm, let's say about 10 centimeters. 10 centimeters. And DO is always positive. Remember, DO is always positive. So I can use these two to figure out what my DI is. And I'm going to use the formula, the big formula, put it up here. DI is equal to 1 divided by 1 divided by F minus 1 divided by DO. All right, so I do that in my calculator, which I conveniently brought. 1 divided by 1 divided by F, 1 divided by 20, minus 1 divided by DO, 10. And now I get a negative number because it's a virtual image, so DI is a negative 20. Is it about twice as far away? Uh, yeah, not too bad, actually. So I measure, yeah, right around 20. So that seems reasonable. And now I also can deal with the heights. So M, let's figure out what my M is, my magnification factor, minus DI over DO. So minus DI was negative 20 over DO, positive 10. And the positives come, the negatives turn into a positive, so this should end up as a positive 2. The positive magnification tells me it's upright. It's on the same side. We didn't invert it. We didn't flip it. So yeah, they're both above the axis. And the 2... It's bigger than one, that means the image is bigger than the object, and it should be two times bigger than the original object. So what was the original height of my object? And then let's figure out what the height of the image will be. Um, centimeters, there we got centimeters. Okay, so my height of the object is where the object is to this line, and I've got about six centimeters. So if I do HI, which is M times HO, a magnification factor times my original height, plus 2 times 6, I should have an image height of about plus 12. And what do I get? Um, I'm measuring 13. Close enough. Close enough. So there's lens 1. And that's just the standard ignore this lens. We're doing everything with this lens and nothing really different there. So now I want to go to lens 2. Well, I don't know about lens 2. The focal, I said, was a negative 15. And we have to figure out what our object distance is. Now the object distance is the dis horizontal distance from our object to our lens. So in this case, it's from here to here. Now I could measure it, but I have a more precise way of figuring this out. Well, once I know how far these are apart. So if I figure that the two lenses are, oh boy, 30 centimeters apart. So this is 30 centimeters. And I want to know how, how far it is from here to here. So this distance, well, that's 30. And then I need to add whatever this was. Well, this is my DI. So this was 12 centimeters. So I know... This is 30 plus 12, 42. Okay, and now if I measure it, are we reasonably close? What did I do wrong? <laughs> I didn't do something right. I'm getting 50 there. Um, what did I do wrong? Ah, that's what's wrong. That's not 12, that was a height. Okay, there's so many numbers. So yeah, if you make this a mistake, well, just remember that I make it too. This was 20 centimeters. There we go. So, image distance was 20. The height was 12. So I have to change this. So it's this 30 plus this 20. All right, so my new object distance is 50. Yeah, that's 50.
Good. Now I can use this formula to get my new di. And, all right, what do we get? So if I take 1 divided by, 1 divided by f, negative 15, minus 1 divided by do, 50, I get negative 11.5. So there is my final image distance. So image distance of negative 11.5. The negative tells me it's a virtual image, which means it's on the same side as the object. My object was on this side of the lens, so my image better be on this side of the lens. Well, yeah, good, it's right there. And it should be 11 and a half centimeters from the lens. Well, we'll see. Oh, uh, yeah, sure, I get 12. That seems reasonable. So now I know that, let's figure out how tall this little thing is. Boy, it's even smaller than my original object. So the height of the object for number two, I'll just remind myself, this is for number two. Okay, the height of the object. Don't go back to this because that was the height of the object for the first lens. Remember that for lens two, this is my object. So I need this height as my new object. Well, what is that? That was plus 12. So the height of the object is plus 12. My magnification is minus di over do minus di, 11.5 over do, 50. Oh man, uh, it's gonna be a positive. I can do that in my head, really. 1.5 divided by 50, 0.2, yeah, 0.23. Okay, so a positive magnification tells me it's not inverted, it's on the same side, it's upright. Yep, so all three of these are above the axis, none of them flipped down. And less than one means that my image is smaller than the original object. Yeah, by a lot. So it's about a quarter the size of the original. So if I have HO at 12 and I have my magnification at plus 2, 3, let's figure out how tall my final uh, image is. So M times HO, positive 2.3 times HO plus 12 equals, okay, I'm being lazy, 12 times 0.23, positive 2.8. Oh, that's pretty little. Is that what we've got here? Positive 3 centimeters. Um, yeah, a little over 3. So that looks to be about right. So the final answer that I want for these double lens problems is going to be an, a little word answer or something like this where the image, the final image is 11.5 centimeters to the left of the, of the diverging lens. So to the left of the diverging lens. You can write diverging lens or just draw it like that. And it's... 2.8 centimeters tall, upright. I'm just gonna erase this real quick. So I've got um, upright, or you could say positive 2.8 centimeters. If you end up with a final image below the axis, you could say negative 2.8, or you could say 2.8 centimeters tall, inverted, upside down. So this is the final answer the format of the final answer that I'm looking for for these two object problems. And it all matched up, so my ray tracing matched with my numbers pretty well. And we've answered the question. Now, when you do two lens problems, you don't have to do all the ray tracing. Um, that's, I just want you to do a short sketch, a small sketch. Mostly what I want to see for two lens problems is, is the math and then an answer kind of like that. So I think that's all we've got. All right.